Today, I wanna to talk to you about scaling your database, specifically using Shard. Sharding is a proven and also super powerful way of scaling a database up to handle many terabytes or even petabytes of data. Slack shards its MySQL database. Shopify shards its MySQL database. Figma shards its Postgres database. Uber shards its databases. All of these companies are choosing sharded architectures because they support scalability, massive demand, and massive data size. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how companies go from a small, single instance database and their journey to scaling up to running databases on thousands of database servers in a sharded environment. In its infancy, most companies can get away with starting with a simple, single instance setup of a database. Maybe this is MySQL, or maybe this is Postgres, or whatever the relational database management system of choice is. And this could be on a managed service, or this could be something that, with a little know-how, you can set up yourself on your own virtual machine in the cloud. Early on at this stage, it's also good practice to set up some kind of automated backup system to make sure that if the server crashes or if you accidentally delete data, you have something to turn back to to recover data or restore from a backup. As your application starts to grow, more users discover you, you're gonna start to get more load on your database. And what you can do at this point is simple vertical scaling, which basically means, hey, I'm going to bump up to a machine that has more CPU, more RAM, more storage available to it, better network bandwidth capabilities, and keep bumping this up as user demand increases. If you start to grow your queries in your database, bump up your virtual machine. You start to gain more users, bump up your virtual machine. Another technique that can be used to help scale at this stage is to utilize replicas. Replicas can be set up to mirror the contents of the primary and then can handle some of the read traffic coming into your database cluster. They can, by nature, only handle things like select statements where things like inserts and updates and deletes have to go to your primary, and then those cascade out to the replicas as well. This can help you scale because one, it allows for some of the load to be distributed across other servers, but it also helps with high availability because if there's a problem with the primary, you can sometimes switch over that role to be handled by one of your replicas and then spin up a new replica to replace the one you took. Even using all these techniques, such as a large primary server and replicas, sometimes this isn't even enough to handle load if your application is growing really fast and you have a huge user base. You can run into issues of compute, right? What if even with a lot of vCPUs, you just don't have enough compute to handle all your queries? You could have issues at the storage layer, right? What if you're outgrowing the capacity of what one storage volume can give you? You can even have network issues where maybe the network bandwidth coming into your primary server isn't sufficient to handle all of your read and write traffic. What do you do when you come up against this issue? Well, a good first step is to do vertical sharding. What this essentially means is you look at the tables in your database and you find ones that are large or problematic and you spread those out onto their own separate servers. For instance, let's say you're dealing with an application called MuscleMaker and you've got these three tables. You've got a users table, you've got a exercise table, and you've got an exercise log table. The users table might have a couple million rows in it if your application is really popular. There's only so many exercises, so maybe that has a few hundred or a few thousand rows in it. But an exercise log would get added for each person that works out every day multiple times because you usually do multiple workouts in a single day. This table will very easily and quickly grow into the billions or even trillions. So this table is a good candidate for vertical sharding. We could create a whole dedicated server just for handling this particular table, separate from the rest of the tables that might not be as big. This table could also have its own replicas so that the primary can handle write traffic and important read traffic, and other read traffic that isn't as important to be absolutely up to date can be sent off to the other replica servers. This is a small example of this, but vertical sharding can be used for much larger databases where you spread tables out across many different servers to be able to handle all the traffic that's getting sent at it from your many hundreds of thousands or millions of users. If vertical sharding is not enough and you have some really big, really problematic tables, another thing you can turn to is horizontal sharding. With horizontal sharding, what you can do is actually take a single table and spread it out across multiple servers. The way that you decide which rows go to which server is using something called a shard key. This is what you can use. It's essentially a function that determines which row goes where. 
For example, with the muscle maker log table, we could say that we're gonna shard based on the log ID. So every row that comes in, we hash the log ID and use that hash to tell us which shard it should go to. This could be problematic though, because this would cause user information to get mixed up across multiple servers. So instead, we could choose to shard on the user ID, hash that, and then for a given shard or for a given user, all of their log information would be on the same shard. Sharding is a great way to scale if you have massive data sets. And this is a part of the reason why companies like Slack and Figma and many others choose sharded applications and have their data spread across hundreds or even thousands of individual shards. Throughout this journey of scaling that we just took a look at, there's been a number of challenges that come up that need to be addressed. Regular and reliable backups need to be handled. Replication and automatically failing over if a server fails needs to be handled. Routing queries to replicas. And also, when you're in a sharded environment, how do you route queries to the appropriate shard? And how do you even handle figuring out moving tables between database instances and doing sharding keys? The cool thing is there's a tool out there that makes handling all of these things much, much easier. And this is called Vitesse. If you haven't heard of Vitesse before, it's a very powerful framework that allows you to shard MySQL databases and manage clusters of MySQL instances. With Vitesse on top of a product like PlanetScale, which is a managed Vitesse offering, you can do things like configure automated backups, have your system automatically detect if the primary is down and handle failover for you to one of your replicas. It can figure out how to route queries to the primary or replica, depending on what you've specified where you want the query to go. It also has capabilities for doing both vertical and horizontal sharding. Vitesse allows you to move tables between different key spaces, in other words, logical databases in Vitesse. And it also supports horizontal sharding with the ability to configure what you want your sharding keys to be and routing rules for your database cluster. A Vitesse database powered by PlanetScale has the capability to help you solve all of the scaling challenges that you face on your way from an early company to a huge success with millions of users. If you're interested in learning more about how PlanetScale works and how Vitesse works, go head over to the PlanetScale website or check out some other videos on our YouTube channel or even go visit our blog. We have a lot of really good content on there about sharding, MySQL, Vitesse, and databases in general. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.